Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with a Another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And today I was thinking about it as each guest comes on board. I've known Dennis, uh, gosh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years or something like this. We met and our, our paths crossed on a number of occasions, but the very sharp young man, anybody who's younger than me is a young man, of course, as we know. So uh, Dennis Brink, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, we should be starting this podcast out in complete honesty here, younger than you. <laughs> Why? For what reason? This is what I want to know. Where have the years gone? So, yeah. so I, I've, I mentioned occasionally on the podcast about doing, the reason I'm doing this is to really get some input or some ideas and some thoughts or tips or whatever you want to call it to maybe people that aren't as resourceful as, as other people. And so let me start you off uh, with this question. What has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic these last five or six weeks? Well, you know, I, I've been thinking about that uh, a bit here as I was preparing to, you know, get together with you here. And really when I think about it, I, I feel so fortunate that I don't have to go to work, you know? So mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about other people and there's been plenty of times in my life when I was living week to week, paycheck to paycheck, oh, wow. month to month. Yeah. And the amount of stress that can get on when there's no income coming in or you wonder what's gonna happen can be pretty intense. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of intense things over the course of my life uh, that have caused me to uh, develop a, a posture and attitude toward getting through those things. And a lot of it is in line with what you are so great about teaching about being consistent with his gratitude. Right. And so that's a huge part of it. Um, you know, as I've looked back over whether it was Vietnam or what I went through there or some of the struggles I've gone through with the loss of a loved one and, you know, in death and those types of things, um, those kind of things can really have an, a toll on you, you know, mentally and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've found that there's a, there was an old saying that give thanks in everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I, and I realized at the time that I was thinking about that, that it didn't say to give thanks for the bad that happened. Right. You know, I'm not thankful that somebody died. I'm not thankful that somebody got their legs blown off in Vietnam or killed. Right. Not thankful for it, but I'm thankful in it. Yes. And I think that, that posture of gratitude has allowed me to begin to glean the good that may exist in the hard thing that I'm going through. You know, when I came back from Vietnam, I wanted to run from everything. I mm. wanted to block it out. I wanted to deny it. Right. I drank heavily. I did a lot of things to try to cope. It wasn't until I turned around to face it and to let go of the judgment I had about it and just began to look for what good I could find in it that it really had a profound impact on me. So I tried to apply that same thing to this. Um, what is it that, what good can, what is the gift that lies wrapped up in this? Right. You know, uh, would I take the time to finally start writing my book that I've been putting off forever? Mm -hmm. Would I practice guitar more? Would I finish up some instruments uh, that I'm working on? I build ukuleles and guitars. Would I finish up some of those? There's, there's always opportunity that exists in, this, in the struggle that we're going through. Right. And so I've just been applying myself to that to make, let that be the focus as opposed to this, uh, the panic sometimes I think that can probably hit a lot of people is when's it going to end? It's got to be over it. Yeah. You know, things that you can't control. Right. You know, and, and our tendency as humans is to come from a place of control, trying to control it. True. And when we feel powerless to control it, then we've got to start finding what, what is the other good? How can this help me? You know, in Vietnam, it was how can I become a better person for what I've been through? How can I become a more loving person, a more patient person? And I think there's lots here. I've been doing a lot of connecting with people in other ways. Zoom like this, we've been doing yeah. some of that. Yeah. The telephone, I've been checking in on people that I wouldn't normally check in on. And so there's been some really neat connections through that. That's neat. But, and you, uh, oh, sorry, Dennis. You say give thanks and everything. And I really like that because it reminds me of going through this terrible time anybody all you have to do is watch the news which i think maybe you can watch too much of it since this started but uh, there's always silver linings and i think this this one of the things i thought about the other day was this technology i feel like i'm sitting across from you at a starbucks with a latte it feels like we're three yeah, or four yeah. feet away and we're on a zoom call so there's a lot of good that, that has come out of this the silver linings through a lot of the dark clouds and and as that gratitude guy and promoting gratitude and being grateful all the time 
what have you noticed? Are you grateful for the same things? Did it change once you went through the pandemic for what you were grateful for five or six or seven weeks ago versus now? Well, I don't know. Like I said, you know, I had to start applying these principles years ago. So I, I felt like I was maybe more prepared to begin doing that just as a result of what I was going through here. There's one thing that I think could be the greatest gift that we get out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because I've been very concerned recent, you know, over the past years as I've watched, especially on social media, and, and an example would be of people's different political views or whatever their views that were different. And what I noticed is there was so much, uh, hatred might be too hard a word, but there was so much like, if I disagree with you, then it gives me the right to say, you're stupid, you're dumb, right. you know, I'm right, you're wrong. And, and I said to a neighbor the other day, I wonder how long we have to be quarantined because in this quarantine, we realize we're all in this together. Right, right. Nobody is untouched. And it's worldwide. Right. And as right. humans, we are supposed to be connected. And yes, we're going to have lots of differences. But those differences should never be the thing that divide us True. and separate us and begin to wedge us against each other mm -hmm. to where we're attacking each other and saying things about each other that it's like, wow, that, that to me, as, as the world has done more of that, it seems like that'll be the thing from within that destroys us. Yeah. Not something external, yeah. but that, that posture and that attitude. And so I, I said to the neighbor, I wonder how long we have to be in quarantine before we really get to understand that once again, that we're all joined to right. gather in this. And, uh, and, and we're not, the other person isn't the enemy. Yeah. Even if he doesn't agree with whatever I think is right. Yeah, and, and I should always be kind. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wonder, you know, are, are we picking up more on that? Because I noticed that it does seem to be making more connections when I'm out walking, you know, because we have this shared common experience of, of hardship. Um, hopefully it's bringing us close together as a human race. Yeah. That's a good point. And I think, again, one of those silver linings through the many things uh, that uh, people that, that being part of something bigger than you or me and that type of thing is, can be very uh, encouraging with the, some of the vitriol and some of the, the negative stuff that's come out. You're absolutely right. And, and I think about that and I think about Dennis Brink and I think about somebody who's done a lot of stuff and way back to Vietnam, but all the things you've done too from uh, the businesses that you've been in and, and building, repairing musical instruments, et cetera, et cetera. Any thoughts, Dennis, on what somebody might do, why they're stuck in their house? I mean, again, you've always had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of balls to juggle. But any other thoughts or things that they could do during this time of, uh, of being homebound? Well, I, I, th I think if, ever, if we all just started looking at the things maybe we've been putting off because we didn't have time would be mm -hmm. possibly one thing that we could begin to apply ourselves to. And I think that's a very magical thing to do if we've been putting something off because you know tomorrow's always going to be a better day and we start doing it today it has a very releasing effect inside of it and who knows what just that alone could begin to do for people the other thing i think is is i've been trying to think who can i encourage in this time because if i'm if i'm you know feeling the effects of this what about someone else if i could focus on another human being and how can i how can i brighten their day yeah how can i bring some positive is there some way i might be able to help financially is there you know, looking for ways to serve our fellow man. That's a great I, I think great there's point. always magic in that. There's always magic. I had a, one of the podcasts recently, and the, the quote was similar to that. And he says, my goal is to be the highlight of somebody else's day. And I thought, yeah. you know, what, a, what a neat goal. And, and again, help those that are less fortunate. I did a Monday morning video uh, a couple of days ago about how the first week or so I, I lost a bunch of speaking engagements and things because of the pandemic and so forth. And, but it took me about three or four days and I kind of gathered myself and I thought, you understand how fortunate you are for all the things that you have. And, you know, who knows if the speaking things will come back or not, but just being healthy and, and just seeing the suffering and the things like that, it goes back to what is gratitude all about, focusing on what you have versus yeah. what you don't have. So, but, yeah. uh, so one, a uh, couple more questions, Dennis, the, any thoughts in your world of what you're going to do to kind of, once this is over, we don't know when it's going to be over. We know it will end, but we don't know how it'll end and in phases and so forth. But any other thoughts you've had around, uh, I'm going to hit the ground running when this is over, that it may be changed since before it happened? Um, again, I don't, uh, you know, before the, pan the pandemic to me is big but it seems small compared to some of the other trials I've been through over the oh, past few years with, with uh, 
uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I, my, I have a daughter that struggles with, uh, with m mentally, you know, she's had some birth defects in life. And she said, it's really interesting. Now people are learning what I, what it's been like for me. I've been in wow. isolation all my life. Wow. And I thought, wow, that is, that just gripped me quite because okay. how many people have been living in isolation already? Wow. And now maybe cool. the rest of the world is getting, you know, a, a, a feel for what that would be like. Yeah, because there's a lot of ways for people to be in isolation. So I, I think I feel more motivated to, you know, let my life message be more about that. How do we stay more connected as humans? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do we do that? How do what I said earlier? How do we let our differences down? I, I, I'm writing about that more as well now. And I was always writing was always something I was going to do. And one day I'm going to write a book, and someday I'm going to. Just not today, but someday. Right. And so I actually started on putting some of those thoughts down on okay, paper. Uh, so that's one thing. And I want to continue that. And then I want to continue the connection with others. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I've always been kind of a connector to, to begin with, but this has made me even more aware of the, the need that exists. Yeah. Because I, sure. people look, I think people, even though our world was going, people a lot of times were still living in isolation with whatever their struggle was, with, with whatever they were dealing with. That is, a, that is a great point. It's back to that, you know, walk a mile in my shoes. And, and so just that isolation piece, that's, that's, I can't say somebody brought that up in the past. That's a great reminder. And so, yes. so, so Dennis, last question. Um, I, I think back to way back, Vietnam was in the 60s and so forth. And you go back to some of the trials and tribulations there for you and different things. And then you and I met and, and you filled me in some of your history. And I did of yours, uh, my history with you. If you had sort of a, what I would call a quote or a saying or a philosophy that you kind of, well, this is what I, I mean, some people said this too shall pass, but, but maybe that you, you think it gets you through a time like this or a philosophy or, or something that is, some people have a quote sometimes that kind of is what's kept you going through all the, the trials and tribulations that you've been through. Yeah. And I think it was, we've been talking about it a lot already. It's actually an old, old scripture that says, when you go through something really tough, consider it a gift. It doesn't say it is a gift. Just says to consider it a gift because mm -hmm. it through that process it'll show what's still lacking in you or in me and and when we see that when our eyes are open to see what might still be lacking it gives the opportunity for that to change so and true. so often we you know we're just in a war with with whatever is going on we're trying to get it to quit we're trying to make it go away we think that's the goal we we gravitate toward pleasure we run from adversity and hardship and difficulty rather than uh, embracing it turning to face the hardship yeah. face it without judge with face it without judgment let it just be uh and and then see what's what can be learned from that i was going through a time when i was really feeling pain a lot of internal pain over uh, some stuff that was going on with a family member and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and it was painful because you couldn't help you couldn't do right. anything to change it and I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if I can live with this pain to the rest of my life. Because mm. I don't know how this pain's ever going to go away. Wow. It feels like it's forever going to be with me. But I wanted to try to run from it. I wanted to try to deny it. In the old days, I would have reached for something like alcohol or drugs that would have numbed it out. Mm -hmm. But I've, given, I've laid that down, so that wasn't an option. And so I thought, I wonder... You know, will I be able to make it? Will it be my undoing in the end? And I finally came to a place where I thought, well, I wonder if I just turned and faced my pain and was just present with my pain, didn't try to judge it, didn't try to make it go away. If I would just do that, embrace it, and just let it be okay, let it be there for what it is. Mm -hmm. Just, and, and there was something so powerful in that. Wow. And I turned to embrace it. And I think that a lot of times that's what we're doing. We're fighting where we're at. If we have power to change it, then we should. Yeah. But when we don't, it's that acceptance that allows us then to begin to glean the message that might be wrapped up in it. Right. To learn from it, to show yeah. us how it may change us for the better. Yeah. And so I, I, that has just been so powerful to me. Um, and like I say, you know, I have a long, long laundry list of all the times that I've had to, you know, apply that in my life, mm -hmm. um, but given me the opportunity to practice it. And, and it always shows up something in me, something that I can learn. Yeah. And I think that's how our world will change.
-hmm. is if we all look to ourselves, if we all look at ourselves first, it's so easy for us to look at the other guy and say, well, I wish he would change. Right. Or I look at my wife and say, I wish she would change. Right. You know, because I'm bugged by how they're being or whatever. It's mm -hmm. bothering me. But when I let that become the first thing that it does is cause me to look at myself in the mirror and to see how this difficulty can then change me for the better. So uh, that's kind of been a life lesson that has uh, guided me through the, the hard times that we're in. And it's doing the same in this time that we're in right now. So, yeah, I like that. I think uh, a lot of what you're describing is wisdom. And it seems like the only way we get wisdom is just days on the planet. You know, and I think about yeah. people that have left too soon. And I think about what I've learned at my age and what you've learned at your age. And again, you've been through a lot of things too, but that's uh, very wise words. That aspect about the isolation piece is really, really fantastic. I'm so glad you included that because again, just walking in somebody else's shoes, you just don't know until somebody says, now you see what I'm talking about. And it helps you yeah. empathize, which is, which is. Yeah. Really yeah. And, I, and I think what, I think what comes before that, David, is humility. Mm -hmm. I think some the hard time can bring us to a place of humility if we let it. Yeah. And if it brings us to a place of humility, then we're really open to be a learner. Yeah. True. When we're coming from another place of just judgment, we're not in a place of humility. We're yeah. in a place of saying, I'm better than David. See? Yeah. David yeah. is worse than me. And that somehow makes me feel better about myself because I think you're worse or whatever. Yeah. That's and true. It's really, oh my gosh, it says so much about us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When we're thinking that way and we can't see it. Yeah. Well, so true. I, you know, that self-reflection back to look at myself in the middle of it. What can change here? Exactly. How can this make me a better person? Right, right. Excellent. It opens up all kinds of possibilities. All kinds of possibilities. Well, listen, thank you all so much. Great, great points as I uh, figured I would get from Dr. Brink. Take two aspirin, call me in the, mo in the morning. So anyway, but listen, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Dave. It was great being with you. Great seeing your smiling face again. Oh. Keep up the good work you're doing. Thank you so much. See you, Dennis. All right. You bet. Bye.